So hello, ladies, gents, those in between. It's finally time to get back into breaking down the UFC. The UFC is back this weekend with the UFC fight night. Magomed Ankalaya versus Johnny Walker 2. Obviously, the first fight happened. Uh, the referee asked Johnny Walker, what country is he in? And he said the desert. He wasn't happy with that answer. He wanted a fucking full-on geography uh, lesson with Johnny Walker. You know, while he was having a fucking fight, and adrenaline would have been pumping through his system. And so they, he stopped the fight, and we got a really stupid no contest. So now this fight's being run back as a main event of a fight night. I don't like it, but we'll see what happens here. But anyway, going on. First the fight of the night, we have Felipe Bunez versus Joshua Van. I feel like this is a pretty easy fight to predict. I'm going to go with Joshua Van here. Felipe Bunez, I'm really shocked he's in the UFC, if I'm going to be honest. Like... I think he was signed as like a short notice replacement for Zaglas Zugamelev, and then the fight just didn't happen, but they kept him anyway. Uh, but I don't know. I just, I think Joshua Van's going to get this one done. We've seen, like, I just don't think Felipe Buna is, is that good. Like, I mean, I feel like that's, like, he, all of his fights are competitive, and then the fights that he's, like, going in there and winning, it's not like, uh, you know, against an impressive level of competition. Went to a split decision with 13-9, and Wisecar Cruz. Like, I know he's got some good submissions. Like, he's got some really unorthodox submissions he's got. But, like, he's almost losing every single fight. He's not beating really good guys. Like, I don't know. I just... He's so much older. Joshua Van's a younger fighter. He's looking really good. He did have a bit of adversity in his last fight uh, against Kevin Borges. But it was still, it was a really fun fight, back and forth fight. Then obviously he beat Zaglas. Like, he's actually a pretty decent guy. Maybe he gets subbed here. I could see that. Joshua Van's been subbed before. But I do like him to get this one done. He's, you know, he's got some really good boxing. Like, I don't know. I just, I think Felipe Bunas is in that, like, category of flyweight you just don't pick. Obviously, there was Shannon Ross, uh... Fucking pull one out for my homie Shannon Ross. He's obviously got cut. But, you know, there's like the other guys you just don't really bet on. Like, you know, the Daniel Laredas, you know, them, them sort of guys in the uh, flyweight division. I think Felipe Bunas is going to be one of those guys. 34 years old. He's pretty much... I mean, he's got a pretty long reach for a flyweight, but I don't know. He's, he's more of a grappler. I just... Yeah, I don't see this going very well for him. I'm going to go Joshua Van, body shot KO. Then moving on, we've got a fight I'm very excited for. Uh, a fighter I'm really high on. Uh, Tom Nolan. Very young fighter is Tom Nolan. But fuck, this guy's a lot of fun to watch. This guy's fucking good. He's 6 foot 3, 76 inch reach. Uh, on Dana White Contender Series, it was 73, but Tapology still got him at 76. So I'm not quite sure what his actual reach is, but... Regardless, this guy's fucking long through the weight class. He's a tall guy. Very good striker. He can grapple too, though. He can generally grapple too. You don't really see much of it. If you watch his amateur fights, though, like you can tell, he's got some grappling. I think he started out as a grappler, which is crazy to see because his fucking striking is pretty fucking nice. Now, he does brawl a little bit, but he's a fucking powerful guy because he's so long in range, it's really hard to like hit him. And... I, I really like him in this fight, you know, I haven't even said anything about Nicholas Motta yet. Nicholas Motta, he's a powerful guy, but he's very limited. Uh, he got masterclassed his last fight by Trey, Trey Ogden, and for some reason, because the referee did a fucking shitty stoppage, it just goes as a no contest, you know, Trey Ogden should have won that fight. He just beat the shit out of him everywhere the fight went, jabbed him up, kicked him up, uh, just took him down at will. It was just an easy performance by Trey Ogden, and I don't think Trey Ogden's striking is on the level of a Tom Nolan like, it's just not, and he was really going out there and masterclassing fucking Nicholas Motta on the feet, and then obviously Motta got brutally KO'd by Manel Torres, you know, in a minute 50, then he got brutally KO'd by Jim Miller, you know, and then on the amateur scene, brutally KO'd by Robert Howe, uh, KO'd by Antonio Carlos Ribeiro, got choked out on the uh, Ultimate Fighter, like, if, you, if you're beating, if you're going to beat him, you're going to finish him, and with someone with such high finishing uh, potential as Tom Nolan, I do think I'm getting this one done by finish. Like, he is just... He's a fucking brutal guy. He goes out there to fight. I've talked to him about this matchup. He's very confident in this matchup. And I do uh, agree with his confidence here. I do think this is a fight he should win. Like, he's just got every fucking advantage you can think. 
Like Nicholas Mota is been KO'd two times in the UFC. His chin wasn't even good to begin with, and now it's even worse because he has been chinned. Like I just I think he's gonna get brutally KO'd here. I think I I just I see Tom Nolan getting him out of there, man. I really do. I think Tom Nolan gets a brutal KO. I'm gonna go first round KO out cold flatline. Maybe Nicholas Mota comes out there. Uh, a bit more defensively sound than normal. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll come out there a bit tentative or something, and Tom Nolan will just beat up his legs. But I do see Tom Nolan getting him out of there. It's just it's a really good fight for Tom Nolan. Like generally, no bias or anything. I really just think this is a fight Tom Nolan should win. He, you know, he, he's fucking good. He's a good fighter, especially for how young he is. Like I, I see him getting this one done, and then maybe they rebook that Mahashate fight that was meant to happen on this card. Uh, then moving on, we have Weston Wilson versus. Juan, no, Jean, is it Juan or Jean? No, it wouldn't be Juan, sorry, Jean. I'm just going to say Jean Silva. I don't think it is Jean, but... Uh, this is an interesting one. Silva, if I remember correctly, is the guy who came out fucking barking like a dog. So, you know, interesting guy. Uh, I mean, the best way I can put this, Weston Wilson isn't UFC caliber at all. He just isn't, like, respectfully to Weston Wilson. He's just not a UFC caliber fighter. He got KO'd by Toritu Ishihara, like, in 2022. Like, that is, a, not a, that is a horrible look, man. Like, that is one of the worst looks ever to get KO'd by him. Obviously, that, that is a former UFC fighter, but, like, he's fucking lost to every single person he's fought. Like... Did he even have a... He had one win in the... No, yeah, okay. He had a few wins. He did beat Julian Arosa. Julian Arosa, though, if you know about Julian Arosa, uh, he just randomly loses fights. He should win all the time. Speaking of Julian Arosa, he's fighting Ricardo Ramos. But, just go and buy this. Like, I... It's just a bad look, man. Weston Wilson, like, he has, he has some stinky losses on his record. Uh, he doesn't really have many great wins, either. Like, I, this is just... If Silver is going to be, like, even, like... If he's going to be a fucking guy who stays in the UFC, he needs to win this fight. Like, if, he, like, if he's just going to be a guy, like, I, I don't really see championship level potential from Silver here or anything like that. You know, I'm not going to be crazy and you know, jump on a hype train or anything, but if he's going to be anything, like, anything decent, he should go in there and he should really just run through Weston Wilson. So I'm going to take him to run through Weston Wilson. You know, Wilson, just, just not very good, man. Like, Obviously, I'm not a UFC fighter. I'm not saying I'd go in there and kick Weston Wilson's ass or anything, but I'm just saying, like, Weston Wilson, he's not really UFC caliber, in my opinion. He's just, I don't know, he's just really lucky to even be in the UFC. He got fucking brutalized by Joe Anderson Brito. Like, yeah, this, I just, I think this is going to end up really badly for poor Weston Wilson. And he was meant to fight Gabriel Santos before. Gabriel Santos really would have fucked him up. Even if he was injured, Santos should have took the, taken this fight anyway. Uh, but moving on, we have Farid Bashara and Taylor Lapius. Now, this is a really interesting fight. Taylor Lapius, you know, on a nice little streak since leaving the UFC. Did lose one fight outside the UFC. But besides that, he beat everyone. He actually left the UFC on a win streak. Like, this guy, you know, he is, really, he is a really decent talent. I'm not going to lie. Like, he is a good fighter. But Farad Bashra is really good as well. And, you know, this it wasn't a win people were respecting at the time. But he does have a win over Damon Blackshear. And that is a win that ages really well. Because Damon Blackshear is fucking good. Like, Damon Blackshear probably should have beat Mario Batista. Like, I don't know, Damon Blackshear, he's, he's done some good things since that Farad Basharat fight. Went to a draw, I mean, before that, he went to a draw with Yusuf Salal, beat Luen Lareda, beat Jose Johnson by Twister, arguably beat Mario Batista. Like, this guy's really good. Like, he generally is really good. And Farad Basharat beat him. Then, obviously, he arm triangled Clayson Rodriguez. Like, I don't know, if, I don't think Farad Basharat is as good as Javid. I've seen a lot of people say Farad's the better brother. I'm not quite sure about that. I haven't seen anything. Maybe he's the guys he's fighting are just higher level, and maybe that's something we need to think about. But I do, I do really like this fight for Farad Bashrat. But Taylor Lapius is good. But I, th I do remember him. I think he lost one of the rounds against Kalen Lochran. I'm pretty sure I might be wrong on that. Uh, but before that, I can't actually quite remember actually. But you know, he is a very good fighter. Taylor, Taylor Lapius is really good. Like, this is a really close fight, but I am just going to lean t 
toward Fa- Farad Basharat. If Taylor Lapius wins this, though, like, maybe he's going on his fucking Brandon Moreno type run, you know? Out of the UFC, comes back, wins a belt, but I don't know. I, I doubt that. I, doubt, I really doubt that very much. Uh, moving on, we've got Marcus McGee versus Gaston Balanus. Ba- Balanus, I think it is. This is a really uh, interesting fight. This fight was already scheduled to happen before. I don't think Gaston Balanus uh, is anything special. I really don't. Like, like who did he fight? He fought Aaron Phillips, didn't he? If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, Aaron Phillips. Like, Aaron Phillips isn't anyone special. And he couldn't go out there and just run through him like he does all these other guys. While Marcus McGee is just going out there and he's murking people. Now, I know... Obviously, he's not murking the greatest guys. Like, I'm not really going to say shit, man. He murked the JP Byers. Like, obviously, JP Byers isn't the greatest one, but, like, he's got some brutal KO power. Like, especially for a bantamweight. I get he's on the older side. I think both of these men men are. How old's Gaston? So, Gaston's 31. So, yeah, you know, they're both... Neither of them are, like, spring chickens in that bantamweight division. But I'm going to go with Marcus McGee. I just see him clipping Gaston. Uh, Bolanus here. I just don't think he's, like really that great. Like, he's a good... He's a fun fighter. Don't get me wrong. He's a fun fighter. But I do think uh, Marcus McGee is just like a... He's just better, in my opinion. But he's very powerful. Uh, actually, he'll probably... I reckon he'll probably rock and sub him, actually. You know, Gaston's got a really good Muay Thai base, so I could see Marcus McGee probably going in there, getting a submission or something like that. Because Bolanus is pretty decent on the feed. Muay Thai background and all. So, yeah, I'm going to take... I'm going to take uh, Marcus McGee here to get this one done. Then moving on, we have Matthew Semmelsberger versus Preston Parsons. This was meant to be Basil Hafez making his return here after his JDM fight. But he pulled out, so Matthew Semmelsberger takes his fight last minute. Preston Parsons, you know, he's not actually that bad. Like, Preston Parsons isn't horrible. He's a good grappler. Uh, But, but, he is a bit chinny. And if you're a bit chinny, and you're fighting Matthew Semmelsberger, Semmelsberger's going to knock you out. So I'm going to, I reckon Matthew Semmelsberger is going to get a brutal KO here over Preston Parsons. Now Matthew Semmelsberger, you know, he has been taken down before, so maybe Preston Parsons could just go in there and put on a wrestling clinic. But even if he does that, like, Matthew Semmelsberger just randomly wakes up and KOs people. Like, he got fucking brutalized by Alex Moreno, and I know he still lost this fight, but, like, in the third round, fucking almost KOs Alex Moreno, just out of nowhere, goes on a fucking rampage in that fight, like, Samuels is a really hard fighter to predict sometimes, like, you'll go in there, he'll knock every, he's, I think he's knocked down every opponent he's fought, I'm pretty sure that is a stat, he knocked down Medic, oh, actually, no, he didn't knock down Chaos Williams, but besides that, I think he's knocked down everyone he's fought, let me just, like, double check who he's fought, I'll know off the top of my head, Knocked down Medic, knocked down Jeremiah Wells like fucking three times. That was a weird decision. Knocked down Jake Matthews three times. Knocked down Alex Moreno. Okay, he didn't knock down AJ Fletcher, but he knocked out Martin Sano. Uh, didn't knock down Chaos Williams. Just killed fucking Jason Witt. Knocked down Carlton Minus. So yeah, this guy just knocks down fucking almost everybody he fights. He's just a powerful guy. That's all Matthew Summersburg is. Just a big, athletic, powerful guy for that world weight division. I think he was like a... An, uh, American football player or something like that, like college or something like that. He used to be a linebacker, I'm pretty sure, because he used to be like 230 pounds or something like that. Because he actually had amateur fights at light everywhere. Like, this guy's massive. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Semmelsberger getting this one done by KO. Then moving on, we have the legendary Andre Arlovsky versus Waldo Cortez Acosta. <sighs> Man, this is a setup fight and a half. If I've ever seen a setup fight, if this. If this fight doesn't go the way I'm expecting, then yeah, I have fucking no clue. But this is just a fight. I can't see... I just can't see Andre Arlovsky winning this fight at this point in his career, man. He got carried by Dontel Mays. Like, Dontel Mays. Dontel Mays. Like, he got carried by Dontel Mays. Like, that's all I got to say here. Matt, Waldo, Waldo Cortez... Cortez oh, fucking Jesus Christ. Waldo Cortez Acosta, first round KO. Moving on. No, I'm kidding. All right, let me, let me get, like, an actual breakdown here. Uh, Andre Oloski, he's 44 years old. He's been KO'd that many times, man. Like, what? how many KO losses? He's got 12 losses by KO. Well, you know, some by TKO. But, like, Jesus Christ. Like, that's, like, a lot. And Wardo Cortez Acosta... Andre Oloski isn't going to go out there and kick Acosta's legs. Like, Acosta, only time he lost... 
It's because of leg kicks to Marcel, Marcos Rodrigo de Lima. You know, it was just because he kept kicking up his leg and he can't check kicks. That's one, I will, that's one thing I will say about Acosta. He can't fucking check kicks. Like, Jared Van Deer arguably beat him because he just kept kicking his leg. Chase Sherman, he beat Chase Sherman. Uh, but, yeah, the thing is about Cortez Acosta, he just can't check leg kicks, but Andre Olofsky's not a big leg kicker. He's not going to go out there and just boot out the leg of Acosta. And if he's not going to do that, <laughs> I just don't see him winning this fight. He's not going to go out there and uh, just stay at range. One leg kick, boom. You know, we're not... We're not going to see fucking... Let's let's give a presentation of this. So we're not going to see Andre Olofsky just come out and do his fucking... He runs out, and then he does his little kick. Runs out, punch, punch. Moves around. Kicks his leg. Like, that is the Andre Olofsky special. I don't think we're going to see this fight. I think we're going to see Waldo Cortez Acosta just fucking blitz him, KO him. And that shall be all she wrote. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little presentation there. Four War Towers, Acosta versus Andre Olofsky. That I just don't think, think like Andre Olofsky in this point in his career is very point fighting heavy. Like he just just does the same shit over and fucking over again. Like it's just he's not very unique, is he? Like he just he doesn't like sh- do anything different. He always does the same things. He's not going in there to finish. I mean, like, just the fact he's going to be trying to win a decision for 15 minutes, while Waldo Cortez Acosta can just KO him at any second. Very good boxing. I'm going to take Cortez Acosta. I really do think he'll get this one done. Then moving on, we have Phil Hawes versus Bruno Fajaya. Fuck. This is a tough one, man. I don't think Bruno Fajaya is really that good. But Phil Hawes, you know, his nickname's No Hype, but should be No Chin. I love Phil Hawes, man. Phil Hawes, on the skill base... On skill alone, if you just could give everyone the same chin level, Phil Hawes is a top five fighter with his skill set. With his skill set, I will stand by it. Phil Hawes is a fucking top five skill wise middleweight, but his chin doesn't exist anymore. He just gets KO'd and KO'd and KO'd. He was beating the fuck out of Ikram Maliskarov, and then just one shot. Fucking windows fucking shut down just instantly. Just KOs him. It was a really perfect one too, I'm not gonna lie, but still. He's just been KO'd so many times that chin's always been a bit sus. I I but I don't know about this, hey. It's Bruno Fajaya. I know he beat Gregory Rodriguez, but like Gregory Rodriguez is a weird fighter. One day he'll just randomly get KO'd. And then he'll beat the fuck out of like good fighters. Like I feel like you have to be like a smaller middleweight to beat him for some reason. I don't I don't know why. But I don't know. Then we we seen Fahey is probably not the most durable guy either. We did see him get knocked out by Ruza Buev Bu- uh by counter right. You know, he just sort of beat the fuck out of Fahey. Like this is a weird fight to predict. But just because Phil Hawes doesn't you know we've seen him carried so many times i do think phil Hawes is better he's a better fighter than bruno Fajaya. Fajaya is a judo background and everything like he does have some good judo but he, we don't really see him wrestle or anything like that he's just like a brawler fuck this is generally a tough one the thing is with phil Hawes, i would pick phil Hawes against most people if he had a good chin but the thing is he doesn't have a good chin like he's so talented why could why why did fucking the fucking higher power that, or whoever the fuck runs the universe. Why did they make Phil Hawes have no chin? He imagine Phil Hawes in there against like these better guys. Like honestly, I could still f- see Phil Hawes wrestling here, but Bruno Fay does have a judo background. I do think he's got some solid hips, so it might be a bit hard to just go in there and wrestle him. Again, I, Phil Hawes could do it. I think Phil Hawes is going to have to become a bit of a point fighter at this point because of his chin, which is sucks. Because I love watching his Muay Thai. Like, he, he put on a fucking, like, Bangkok ready performance against Duron Wynn, but again, it is Duron Wynn. He's, like, a bantamweight, a middleweight, but... I'm going to go for Hay. I think Fahey is going to KO him. As much as I like Phil Hawes and I want him to win, I do think he's going to get KO'd here, unfortunately. Then we got Ricky Simone versus Mario Batista. I'm going with, uh... I'm going to go with Ricky Simone here, man. Like, Mario Batista is good. But I don't see where he wins this fight against Ricky Simone. He's not going to go in there and chin Ricky Simone. Like, he won't do that. Like, I don't think Mario Batista's striking is that good. And I know Ricky Simone's not got the best chin. KO'd by 
uh, Song Yadong, KO'd by Uriah Faber. Like, we have seen him KO'd and rocked a few times. But I think I think Ricky Simone is, like, solid enough. He's got really good takedown defense. I don't think Mario Batista can go out there and wrestle him. If he did, I would generally be shocked. But I think we sort of see Mario Batista's level. I know Damon Blackshear was on short notice. And maybe Damon Blackshear just is that good. But I feel like Ricky Simone is just a level above both. Obviously, people can improve and everything. But Ricky Simone, solid takedown defense. Powerful guy. We did see him go in there and KO Jack Shaw. Like... And he just used his strong takedown defense. And I, I sort of think Jack Shaw is a better grappling game than Mario Batista. Maybe that's a hot take and a half, but I don't know, man. Ricky Simone's powerful. He is generally a powerful guy. He's a young guy. Although, how, what is the age difference between him and Mario Batista? It is, okay, yeah, like a year apart. So they're both like the same age, similar age. I just, I like Ricky Simone in this fight. I feel like this is the fight he should win all day. I think he keeps it standing. And we did see Mario Batista get KO'd by Trevin Jones. So I'm going to say Ricky Simone can stuff the takedowns. And I think he can land one of those big wrestler overhands that he always seems to land. You know, he, he got a nice KO over Rafael Asuncao as well. Let's not forget that. And then Asuncao went after that and, you know, had some good fights. Went in there and beat, uh... Oh, fuck. What's that guy's name? Uh... Henry... Something Henry. Victor Henry. Victor Henry, sorry. Yeah, he went in there and he beat Victor Henry. So, you know, that's a decent win there. Then we've got Jim Miller versus Gabriel Benitez. This is an interesting fight, man. I think I see a lot of people just going with Jim Miller. But, like, Gabriel Benitez, good leg kicker, good kickboxer. But also, at the same time, he is a bit older himself. And, yeah, we've seen him get beat up quite a lot now. Like, like, he is 35. He's not young himself either. We have seen him get KO'd by David Onama, KO'd by Billy Quarantillo, KO'd by Sadiq Yusuf, KO'd by Andre Feely. Uh, yeah, he's, just, he's he's taking a lot of damage. I think, it, I think it's safe to say that maybe Benitez's chin isn't the best at this point. Like, he has been KO'd more than Jim Miller, I'm pretty sure. Like, Jim Miller's... Jim Miller's only been KO'd two times. Like, one thing about Jim Miller, he still does have a good chin. Only been KO'd by Cowboy Cerrone and Dan Hooker. Like, that's not that's not bad, like, people to get KO'd by. I think Jim Miller's got a grappling advantage in this fight. I, th I think he's, honestly, I think he could KO Gabriel Benitez as well. I don't think that's out of the question either. I'm going to go Jim Miller by KO. Jim Miller's, like, randomly developed all this KO power at this point in his career. It generally is really weird to see, like... He didn't KO anyone for ages. Then he KO'd Eric Gonzalez, KO's Nicholas Mota, KO's Jesse Butler. And I know these guys aren't the highest level guys. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not arguing that these guys are better than Gabriel Benitez. But, you know, he's, he's like, popping... He's getting a lot more popping his shots lately. Maybe that's just the guys he's fighting. But with Benitez being KO'd so many times, I could see, like, a KO... Like a genuine KO here from Jim Miller. So I'm going to take the the GOAT Jim Miller. And I hope he just can get through this fight with no damage. Because I want to see him on UFC 300. If we don't see Jim Miller on UFC 300. I will be fucking furious. Because that, that ruins a great story. But I think Jim Miller will get this one done. Against Gabriel Benitez. Uh, and yeah, I will say KO. I know people are going to expect him to go out there and grapple. But Benitez... He's been KO'd a few times. He's barely been subbed twice. Obviously, Jim Miller's a very good, he's got very good submissions, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to take, I, I think I'm going to take Jim Miller. Also, the fact that you got to remember is like, Benitez is pretty much a featherweight just, just that you just couldn't make the l limit anymore. Like he's, what, he's, you know, he got too old for the weight cuts. Like he's, he's going to be a lot smaller than Jim Miller, I feel like. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think Jim Millick is just going to have a phys physicality uh, difference here. Uh, and I think he's going to go in there. I think he's beat up Gabriel Benitez. Probably get a KO, but... It's easy. Gabriel Benitez is a live dog in this fight. Don't get me wrong. Uh, then we got Mateus Nicolau versus Manel Cape 2. Obviously, this fight happened a few years ago, and every man and his dog fought Manel Cape 1. I fought Manel Cape 1. You fought Manel Cape 1. Your grandma probably fought Manel Cape 1. Your fucking dead ancestors probably fought Manel Cape 1. And I think Manel Cape wins. Again, I just don't see how he loses this fight. Nick, uh, Nicolau, you know, he got knocked out by Brendan Roy Valley's last fight. Like, his chin's not the greatest. And I know that, obviously, he didn't get carried by, you know, Manel Cape when they fought the first time. But I feel like Manel Cape has, like, improved quite a lot since then. 
So I am going to take Manel Cape to get this one done. And I do. So I'm just, I'm going to take Manel Cape by KO. I think I just said that, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but moving on, we have the main event. Magaban and Kalaev versus Johnny Walker 2. I'm taking Magaban and Kalaev. I know a lot of people are picking Johnny Walker here, but I just don't see it. Like, I know the, the, we didn't really learn much from the first fight, but Magomed Ankalaev did take him down from memory. And I think he can just sort of do that the whole fight if he really wants to. I know Johnny Walker is on, like, a nice run at the moment, but, like, are the guys he beat really that good? You know, Anthony Smith on the downward spiral. Paul Craig, Chinny. I don't know, Kutalaba, stupid. And then he lost to Jamal Hill, Tiago Santos. You know, the Tiago Santos fight was weird, but I don't know. I just, I think there is levels at light heavyweight. Johnny Walker could go out there and KO Magomed Ankalaev. He is athletic enough to do it, but I feel like it's a bit of a Hail Mary. And I don't, I see a more tentative Johnny Walker, especially in a five round here. So yeah, I just think Magomed Ankalaev, he's going to fight very smart here. He'll kickbox at range. He'll you know, be wary of the unorthodox fucking athletic power that Johnny Walker brings, but I think we are, I think we're going to see Magomed Ankalaev catch Johnny Walker on the chin and KO him. Magomed Ankalaev, after like a fucking first round, uh, first fight, no contest, comes back fucking aggressive as fuck in the rematches. We seen it with Ayan Kutalabri try to take that man's fucking soul. And I think we're going to see him, you know, there's some beef between these two. I think we're going to see Magomed Ankalaev go in there, KO Johnny Walker, Probably, I'm going to go second round KO. I think he'll wrestle the first round. He'll keep Johnny Walker down a bit. Johnny Walker will probably, you'll have a few scares where he'll throw some real big shots, but Magomed Ankalaev, he'll fire very smart. He won't get caught with anything. And I think Magomed Ankalaev goes in there and gets him out of there. So yeah, I'm taking Magomed Ankalaev by second round TKO, but god damn, it feels good to be breaking down these fights again, man. I'm so fucking happy the UFC's back. Uh... Yeah, fucking thank God. Bring on the 2024 season. Let's let's expect some crazy things. Let's hope this let's hope this channel can fucking grow. And yeah, I'll be break. I right, another thing. I will be doing a live fight companion on this card. So keep your eyes out for that. I'll be I'll start Felipe Bunas versus Joshua Van. I will be there for the first fight of the card. And I'll be there for the last fight of the card. So keep your eyes out for that. I'll be doing live fight companions for every UFC card this uh, this year. At least I'll fucking try. But yeah, that, that's the aim. I'm going to be doing... You know, I'm going to join the other MMA YouTubers. I'm going to be fucking up there doing my fucking live companions. And it'll be a lot of fun. You'll get to see my true personality. Not the... Uh, I think analyst analytical version of me. You'll just get to see me as one of the boys watching the fights, and it'll be like the boys fucking chatting, you know. I'll just be there. I'll be saying my fucking unfiltered thoughts watching these fights. So yeah, just check it out when the when I go live. You should get notifications for it. But if you don't already have me like notifications on for me, make sure you put them on. And especially if you don't want to put them on for all my videos, put it on for live videos because yeah, I'll be doing the companion as soon as the fights start. I will be breaking down the first fight and the last one. So. Yeah, keep your eyes out for that. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give this video a like. Uh, let me know your predictions in the comments below. What what predictions do you disagree with? What predictions of mine do you think are a bit of a hot, hot take? I feel like I probably picked all of the favorites here now that I'm looking at it. Like, I really didn't go too crazy for this card. Like, I picked Van, Nolan, Wilson. No, oh God, no. Silva, Farad, McGee, Samuelsberger. Costa, Fahea, Simone, like, I'm pretty sure I picked all favourites, now that I'm thinking about it, which is very unlikely that we get all favourites, but still, that's just the way I'm going, but yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for liking, make sure you give this video a like, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video, cheers, peace.